Okay, so let's do an example of uh, one-dimensional problem solving. So let's look at this example where we're driving in a car at 15 meters per second. There we go. Which is just a bit under 35 miles per hour. And we see a super cute bunny jumping out in front of the road in front of us. And you hit the brakes and stop as quickly as you can and come to rest in about one and a half seconds, which is pretty reasonable for 35 miles per hour. So how far do we travel before we come to a stop? So as with any other problem like this, what we're going to do first is we're going to prepare by drawing a picture. So first we want to draw, for instance, our car. And it's initially moving at some initial speed vi. We'll write in the number in a little bit. Now which way we choose to have it moving is, of course, arbitrary. So let's just choose it moving to the right, because the right is a positive direction. And we like positive numbers rather than negative numbers. Let's draw the road here. And the road is going to be our x-axis. We're going to measure that in meters. And then at some point, there is a bunny. So here's our cute little bunny that is sitting in the road, jumps into the road. Uh, and we're not told where the bunny is. So we're just going to put him at some point and hope that we don't hit him. So before we go on, we need to label some things that we know. For instance, we can label the initial position and the initial time of the car. And then at some point, well, of course, the car is going to stop. So here's our car when it has stopped. And it stops at some final position and some final time, which, again, we're going to fill in in just a second. And uh, since we have been slowing down, since we were initially moving to the right and now we've stopped, we know that there is some acceleration to the left. Okay, so now let's go through and label some of the things that we know. Uh, so let's start with the initial x position. So we know we can always choose the initial x position in an arbitrary way. Uh, we can choose, sorry, the origin in an arbitrary way. So let's choose that to be zero meters initially. And same thing with the time. We can always choose the origin of time uh, to be wherever we want it, so let's choose that to be the initial time. The final position, well, we don't know anything about that. Uh, we are told uh, what the final time is. We're told that we come to rest after one and a half seconds. Um, let's go to the velocities now. Well, so we have an initial velocity, and we're told that's 15 meters per second. Uh, and we haven't labeled any final velocity here because, well, it seemed kind of obvious at the time, so let's just label that the final velocity, since we're at rest, should be zero meters per second. And then, finally, we don't know the acceleration, so we'll leave that as an unknown. So before we try and solve anything, let's list our knowns and unknowns. So what do we know? We know the initial x position and the initial time. We know the final time, we know the initial and the final velocities. And zero meters per second for the final velocity. The things we don't know are the things we left and labeled as question marks. So we don't know the x acceleration or the final x position. And what are we after? Uh, well, the problem asks us to find the final x position. But uh, as you might expect in something like this, we're actually going to need to find the acceleration as an intermediate step. So it's going to be kind of a two-step problem. So now we've set everything up. We have our picture. We have what we know and what we don't know. So let's move on to actually solving the problem. So as I just said, I think we're going to need to find the acceleration in the x direction first. So what we're going to have to do is use something, some combination of the knowns uh, to find this one unknown ax. So using something that has all knowns except for ax, well, this is one equation, vxf, that says the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus the x acceleration times the elapsed time, which we can rearrange to find the x acceleration. So the x acceleration is the final velocity minus the initial velocity over the change in time. Now that we've reached that final step, we plug in our numbers, 1.5 seconds. 
And you might be tempted to say the seconds cancel, but they don't. They're both the seconds in the denominator. And so ultimately we get minus 10 meters per second squared for the acceleration. Now let's check, make sure that makes sense. That acceleration is negative, which means it must be pointing in the left-hand direction. And indeed, we found that the acceleration was pointing in the left-hand direction uh, on our picture. So that makes sense, and at least agrees with what we expected. Okay, so now we have the acceleration, so we can use this to find the final position. So now let's use our position equation to find the final position. So the change in the x position is the initial x velocity, the elapsed time, plus one half times the x acceleration, the elapsed time squared. And so we can plug in numbers here. So the initial x velocity is five, 15 meters per second. The elapsed time is one and a half seconds. And the same thing here, 10 meters per second, negative 10 meters per second squared for the acceleration, and one and a half seconds all squared for the time, last time. And we plug in all of our numbers, and we get out 11.25 meters, or putting this in two significant figures, we have 11 meters. So this is ultimately the uh, final position, because delta x is, of course, xf minus xi, but xi is zero, so this is just xf. So the final x position is 11 meters to two sigmas. And that was the answer to the question. They didn't tell us exactly where the bunny was, and so we don't know if we hit them or not. Hopefully we didn't.